Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So the David Brown video was such a success, decided to see if we could do another one. Uh, the background on this one is it has been sat at least 25 years, probably slightly over 30 years. Um, probably not much more than that because I've checked the fuel that's in it and it's green diesel rather than red and I think that change came about late 80s, early 90s, but certainly this has been sat here since sometime in the early 90s. It's a 990 Selectomatic. Um, as you can see, roof of the building has um, fallen in and things. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, behind it is something even older, but we're going to talk about that separately and I can tell you about that one right now. But um, that, by the way, yeah, I'd love to do a video on it, but I don't think it's viable. I don't think we're going to get that to run because there's a lot of parts missing off it. But let's get started with the David Brown. So um, the, right, I'm going to get some tools. I know the thing is pretty rough, but um, I tried jamming a screwdriver in the ring gear because the starter is missing off it and the engine does rotate. So... Um, now I only rotated a couple of degrees. I'm going to get a screwdriver and I will bar the engine over a couple of times, make sure it's free. Uh, the pre-cleaner is rotted away, so we'll disconnect the intake system and make sure that, that is clear. The pump, uh, certainly the controls in the pump, and it's a different pump to, I'm not sure if the, oh yeah, sorry, it's the same pump actually as the, as the other tractor had. So the on-off is free in it and, the throttle, when the linkage is disconnected, also moves, but we may have to check the rack inside in that. Uh, fuel filters, obviously, we're going to drop, replace those. There's another problem here as well on the opposite side, and that is that... Get this load around. It appears that somebody has taken the oil filler cap on it, so uh, obviously we're not going to start this. Uh, with the oil that's in it, we're going to have to drain the oil out of this thing and um, give them an oil change. So I've got filters and things for that while we're here. I cracked this already the other day, but the diesel doesn't look that bad and it actually smells like diesel. And the tank has been sealed, so we'll just drain off a little bit and take it from there. The key, of course, has gone out of it. But we won't worry about that. I'm just going to disconnect the whirling loom. Um, well, it's already done for me because somebody's had the starter motor out of it. So we're just going to come straight off the sunlight when it comes to starting. Okay, let's start with the basics. I grab my tools. Let's bar the thing over. And then we'll work our way through the lubrication system and through the fuel system. Um, don't have a starter today. Uh, there is a friend of mine starting out a starter for me. I will be able to pick that up before I come back here. I must travel this week, so it's going to be next week, which is hopefully the week you're going to be seeing this video. Uh, that, that'll get done. So, cracking. Let's turn the engine over, see if it's... Make sure it's free before I go put the starter motor on. Can work out this way, can I? Yeah. And then lift this off to make that just a bit easier. See what we're working at. Good news is, down inside the exhaust manifold looks clean. The 
Just gonna stick this little stump back on there again, just to. Yeah, that really won't do much. We cover that with plastic for the moment, just so nothing falls down in there. Um, injector lines are all intact. The engine actually turns oh, quite easily, so that's good. Uh, I would say we have zero coolant in this thing. Yeah, radiator's just full of pine needles. So if it's going to be run for any length of time, we're going to have to take half the red and give it a wash. But for the purpose of starting, I'll just put water into it. And uh, if this is going to be restored or anything, we'll do a proper job on it. Uh, it's actually quite clean. I mean, when you think of the 996, I've been sitting for a fraction of the time and it was had a lot of groive and mess in it and a lot of stuff growing through it. Um, diesel tank is good and the diesel, as I say, smells good in there. So, right, the um, oil filler has been exposed at the other side and I can't find a um, dipstick to check the oil and to see if there's water in the oil. Now, what I do know is some of the points from the trees and things have gone down into the, the sump as far as I can see. So I'm just gonna drain a bit of oil out of it. Let's see how we get. If we get water or if we get actual oil. I think it's kind of round up so I'm using the vice grips on it. This whole load of water doesn't come out of this thing. Water, oh, yeah, very shitty looking oil. So, uh, yeah, I know this is a bit painful, but I'm going to give this thing an oil change, not my tractor. So, if this engine has a chance of surviving, I need to give it every chance I can. Plus, the fact that I've no dip stick, I can just see what's. Um, how much oil this thing should take. I'll just put that quantity into it. But it is pretty crappy as you can see. But only the tiniest little bit of, um, of water in there and there's no sign, I would assume. I oh, know it's not, I thought maybe it was a magnetic sun plug, but no sign of metal or anything so far. But yeah, that. Does not look good. No, well, less than that, I'm going to get some rags and I'm going to clean the oil filler tube. Um, I'm going to have to get a cap for it, but I think what I'll do is I'll just get one of those um, cheap uh, temporary petrol caps. I got one from a garage or from a fire supply place. We can stick that in there until I track down proper oil cap for it. Alright, so while that oil's draining, I'm going to take off the pre-cleaner as well. Have a look at that. It's an interesting setup actually I haven't seen before. Where the incoming air actually goes through the top of the radiator. It's weird. So you have the pipe from the air cleaner up to the rad and then the pipe from the rad down to the end manifold. No, I suspect that this is probably perfect because I'm just going to grab a light and have a look in there. Yep, yeah, that is perfectly clean. Uh, the oil belt itself, a drop, but I'd imagine it's probably full of water and crap. So we'll take it after if we can clean it and reuse it, we will. These things are always nasty. Oh, please don't let anything live jump out at me. Oh, lovely. All right. Yeah. Oh, and that was our video service. Yeah. I'll put that there. I'll deal with that in a minute. 
Um, actually, need is there. Oh, yeah, you can see. Oh, my God. All the crap falling out from the underside of that. So, look, we're going to start this thing with the... Um, Actually, do you know what we do? We disassemble this thing because it's actually in reasonable shape. And um, take it home and clean it out properly with the air compressor. And we wash it down with some diesel. And we can refit it. Um, I'll pick up it. I'm sure I have an old pre cleaner top. Another engine that will fit it temporarily. But uh, seeing as it is intact. It's probably worth cleaning it properly. The other good news is whoever um, robbed the starter motor left the bolts behind. So at least we have fixing bolts. And um, I've already arranged as a neighbour of mine who fixed the starter for the... Or helped me fix the starter for the Nissan. Has got a starter he's building it up for me during the week. So when I get back next weekend, he'll have that ready for me. And uh going to throw it in there and hopefully this thing will be ready to go. I'll take this away anyhow and uh Starting to rain through the whole the roof on me. Oh. And this thing has got some, some amount of instant gasket on it. Yeah. The oil strainer is absolutely caked in crud and the sump looks brutal. So I'm glad I dropped this now. Otherwise, it doesn't look bad. There's no corrosion or anything up in there anyway. But I'm going to take off the screen and clean it. And um, I'll take the sump outdoors there in a minute where you can see it. But we're going to have to do a fairly heavy duty cleaning job on it. Uh, it just would not have done the bearings any favours if we started it like this. You know, and it's somebody else's tractor. And that wouldn't have caused damage to it. So, uh, gasket. I'm just going to have to do what the previous person did and plaster it an instant gasket. Unless I can find one in the meantime. Oh, no. Come on. Whoa, that's the trust I've been changing a long time. Oh. It's actually not that bad, it doesn't smell particularly bad and there's no sign of diesel bug or anything in there. See what the uh, oh filter it's rusted to filter housing. Let's have to get that out. I think. Yeah. It's actually not bad. I mean, it's comparable. It's probably actually cleaner than that 990. Or sorry, the 996 was. So, um, we're driveling fuel here, so I'm just going to pop it up there for two seconds. I'm going to get some fuel filters and put it back in. Oh. 
Oh, oh yeah. It's right down there. Mm -hmm. It's right on top of the impact. Oh. Getting this filter actually isn't bad. But obviously we're not gonna reuse it. There you tell me when I get the fuel. There's something oh yeah. Chris. So it might have been a bit of a pig of a job to get this sump off and I'll probably have to get a gasket or else clean it up and try and use instant gasket on it but I think that's well worked line. Now this is the oil strainer off the bottom of the pump so that had quite a bit of crud in it but there was thick crap in the bottom plus the front end there I would imagine there's bits of yeah it's like a little seed off a tree. So there was stuff going in through that open oil cap, which we've now cleaned that oil passage. So we're going to take this away, um, clean it out. We'll just literally drag all the guns out of it and then um, steam clean it. At least then when we reassemble, we know that the, the oil system should be 100%. We've also got an oil filter, but I'm not going to change that today. We'll do that next time we come back. So I've just temporarily blocked intake, exhaust, and uh, anything else that needs to be blocked off. And we're going to leave it there for today. And come back to it next Saturday, and hopefully this thing will run. Oh, nice. Very nice. It's very nice. Get some of this into our waste oil container for relief. I want this spilling everywhere in the back of the Range Rover. As you can see, the steam cleaning was a huge success. Um, managed to get most of the dirt on in the off the components and onto my face in here. So I am going to go home and have a shower and I'll show you the result of the cleaning. Okay, so here we are back in the workshop. Big difference in that sump, as you can see. Um, I've just blown out just the remaining water with compressed air, and I'll leave it here on the shelf for the next couple of days to dry out. Uh, this is the air bath oil cleaner, the bottom part of it. Um, this is one the internal filters out of that, and this is the remainder of the unit. 
So I mean that thing was completely caked and dirty, it was no absolutely spotless. Um need to find a pre-cleaner to sit on top of it, but I think I might have one around here that'll fit it. And this is the gauze from the oil pump pickup in the sump. So as you can see, uh still one or two little bits of stuff really caked on there. Um if I can give it a shot of carburetor cleaner and some compressed air to take that out. But yeah, uh, I'll have to sit here for the week. I need to go to Spain, do some work for the week, and when I come back, we will assemble this thing next Saturday morning, hopefully for it up. Okay, day two, we've got the clean sump and air intake system, it's all cleaned up. Filter, oil, and um, my neighbor very generously built up a starter motor for me out of parts so we'll chuck that on as well in a minute and um, brought some ATF, I have another job for this that we'll discuss later alright, let's get going So you can see the level of crud in that oil filter. That oil is just filthy, so I'm glad we changed it. It's going to put a new cartridge in this and pop it back on. Alright, so this is just a paper element filter. Quite simple. Just push it in. It goes on to a little spring-loaded thing inside now before we install it. Of course, like fuel filters, it's got no ring, so I'm just going to pop the old o ring out of the filter housing. I think it actually already came out. I'm just going to clean the outside of the housing as well. So it's the first two and a half litres. Now, of course, I never brought a cap for that, so we're going to have to. Block it with a rag or something for the meantime, we'll go and get a cap this afternoon. But uh, I don't want to have to make that trip again and come back down here. Supply starter. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna pop a battery into this thing. Okay, so we should be ready to go. Um, oil filled up the capacity, new filter fitted, new fuel filters fitted, and bled through. Uh, just uncover the exhaust manifold. Uh, take that rag. The pump at the moment is in the off position because I don't want this thing to start. No, I just want to try bumpy at first. Make sure everything's okay. Go to the battery and master switch. Oil bath is back in place and our freshly rebuilt starter motor is in there. I've just come off straight off the positive lead and brought this little fly lead back and over here somewhere we've got a starter switch so uh, going to get rid of the cameras now and I'm going to turn on the battery and we'll just give it a bump should be in neutral in both gearboxes so let's see what this thing does Okay, so we should be ready to go. Um, oil filled up the capacity, new filter fitted, new fuel filters fitted, and bled through. 
uh, just uncover the exhaust manifold. Uh, take that rag. The pump at the moment is in the off position because I don't want this thing to start. No, I just want to try bumpy at first. Make sure everything's okay. Bit of the battery and master switch. Oil batteries back in place. And our freshly rebuilt starter motor is in there. I've just come off straight off the positive lead and brought this little fly lead back. And over here somewhere, we've got a starter switch. So, uh, going to get rid of the cameras now and I'm going to turn on the battery. I'll just give it a bump. Should be in neutral in both gearboxes. So, let's see what this thing does. Okay, ready to go. swing it over again. No, we're going to have to, I would imagine, yeah, leads are quite hot. I'm going to have to get sharper leads and clean up all the electrical connections on this thing to get it to crank a bit quicker, but look. It just sounds like it's got compression anyway. Okay. Okay, so for the fun of it, I'll switch the fuel on. Let's just give it a, a quick crank and see what happens. Hmm, not cranking. So turn the battery off. I did. It's spinning far too slowly. Right. That connection's warm. The lead is a little warm. We need to improve these connections that are turning at a better pace. And it's going to turn the fuel off again. Okay, um, fuel off. I've just tried cleaning up a few connections and just see if it's made any difference. Right, it's a big improvement. Okay, Turn you over. We'll just try to give it a bit of fuel and see what happens. Okay, here it goes. It's making smoke. Right. 
make sure that rack is actually open. Right. <laughs> I said I shut it down, but let's just bring her up now. The minimum of shot this time to see what happens. start turning her battery, her batteries, take a break for a second. Mm. Yeah, I'd say that was a start. And uh, I know people keep telling me just use ether, but, um, and I was going to go and get some ether. I forgot to bring a can with me, but um, fair enough without it. I just, something blew out of somewhere, I wonder what that was. I got hit by something. I glad I was wearing my safety glasses. <sighs> right, so, I think I'm gonna leave it there for this evening because I need to go and charge the batteries. We we'll just give the starter motor a break and I uh, might bring a can of ether tomorrow. Though I think I was kind of wondering was the rack inside this kind of sticky a little bit. I don't really want to go take it apart because I'd never taken one of these pumps apart but um, Look, we'll bring the kind of ether result tomorrow as a last resort, which you did fire off at least today. I mean, considering conditions it's living in, it did a pretty good job. So something interesting actually as well. Just to give you an idea of how long this thing has been there. That loader is definitely, um, hasn't been accessed in a long, long time. On these trees that have grown up around here. It's a pity. You know, it probably was relatively dry for a very long time. I mean, you hear the way it turns over and um, what good compression it has as well. And look in there. Look at that, the old um, Fordson. We need to take a look at that in a separate video, I think. But uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go charge my batteries and uh, come back to it tomorrow. Okay, everybody. Fingers crossed, let's give this thing a go. Bring up the reds a bit. And ah, are you so stubborn? Right.
running. Uh, just need <laughs> to grab some water now and put it in the, the cooling system. I can't even talk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 20 sniff of ether, just got her over the top. I'm not a fan of ether. Last video, somebody actually commented, why didn't you use ether and spare the starter motor? Um, important thing with ether, have the engine cranking if it's diesel before you give it the shot and only give it the, the tiniest touch and that's all it took. Uh, next time I hit it, I probably won't even need ether, it'll probably just fire straight off. I was raised with this idea that ether was the devil and that everything you use it on got addicted. But I watched an excellent video by Lord Mock. Um, take a look at his channel and he does a, a very informative video on ether and the use, correct use of ether. Um, certainly if you're having to use it all the time you've got a problem and you should investigate it but this is only the third time I've ever had to use it. I used it on the Mass CRS the first time we just couldn't get it fired off so I eventually had to give it a little sniff and it took off and my Detroit the very first time I started. After that never again needed it. So success. Gonna go and grab some water now uh, which of course I forgot to bring with me I'm so organized. We'll get some out of a pool over there and we'll fill up this cooling system. We'll fire her up and let her idle up. And I might even jump in the driver's seat so you can this thing actually move. That stopped it. Yeah. What did you do? There was a drain cock open on it. Right, you got a leaking radiator. Was well, there much we can do about that? I'm just going to fill it. We'll run it as quick as we can before it. Yeah. Do we have any tape? No, I won't okay. do it. It's not much leaking. Yeah. Okay. So um, the drain cock and the radiator, and the one of the block were both open. So, we probably don't have a crack block at least in a minute. You must have had the water drained out of it when it was laid up. Now we've got a radiator hose leaking down there. We'll get some bit of coolant into it. And we'll try and fire it up and run for a little bit. We won't run it for too long. Obviously when it doesn't, when it's losing coolant. But we can always um, come back if you want after this video is done and repair that hose and uh, get it running a bit longer if you want to see that. Right. She's leaking out of there. Okay. So give it a spin. Fuel on. There actually is a chance this thing might move, so I'm just going to disconnect the second set of batteries and get them out of the way just to make the thing mobile. And um, I might have to go and get some more water just to stay ahead of that leak and we'll see can we uh, drive it.
Just fur it up again now, fur it up a little. Oh yeah, help if I turn the fuel back on. <laughs> so see how easy this is not. Just like that. Okay, so she's a runner. Uh, it is now 25 to 3 on Sunday. I need this thing to try and hit at 7.30 this evening. So I'm going to park it there because I need to get back, finish the editing. I've edited some of the footage from the last two days and get it uploading so that you can see it this evening. I uh, believe 7 o'clock on Sunday evening, according to the analytics from my prime time. So I want you to see this. So, uh, just a word of thanks to Mickey, who allowed me to work on this thing. Uh, also to Johnny, my neighbor, who built the starter for me. And um, to one of my other buddies who tipped me off to this being here. So, um, thanks for watching. As ever, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And leave a comment below. Drop in, say hello. Give your opinion on it. And... Let's take a little walk back here for just two seconds. I've been kind of keeping this from you. But now this may not be viable, but what say we take a look at this? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, we can come back here and bring the compressor, pump the tire, do a little tidying up on this and actually get it moving if you want to see that. It's close enough to doing it. Of course, the minute it's off there, um, my lovely wife spotted that there was a chalk in front of the wheel, so I should take that out. The clutch, I think, is dragging a small bit. It, it was not engaging fully, but she certainly wants to move. I think the brakes in this one might not actually be stuck. Uh, so if you want me to come back here in, probably get back here late next week and try and get a movie and bring you another video on that and run it a little more, uh, leave a comment down below. If you want to see that, I'll make that video on my Okay, so that's it for this time, guys. Thanks for watching.